I'd love to go to Italy, sit in a lane and make pasta all day. Everybody, it's Barry here. Hope you are well, wherever you are, wherever you are in the world. Hello, uh, welcome to the kitchen. I uh, hope you're doing well and all that stuff. Today we are doing a third uh, video in this sort of budget thing, which is probably going to turn into a, a series. We've already done the bacon pasta for 99p, oh, and the Cajun chicken tacos. Mm. So today uh, we are doing. I've let you down. 99p. I couldn't quite do it. One pound pizza. Noki. I've never made Noki before. Hopefully it's gonna knocky your socks off. Gosh, so sorry. So some of you are like, oh no, but you wouldn't buy per portion. I'm like, I'm not, I'm, that's not the point. It's like buying the ingredient, one pound per portion, but you've got all that left over that you can like use your creativity, because you're much more creative than me, and you can make so much more stuff. Compare it to buying it in a restaurant or something like that. That's, that's what we're doing. And you guys are loving it, so thank you. But anyhow, one pound gnocchi today. I've never made gnocchi in my life, and one of the ingredients is tinned potatoes, which I've, I don't think I've ever, ever bought in my life, which seemed genius. They're already peeled, they're already parboiled. So they are actually, when they're, they have to be, for the canning process, partially cooked. But you need to kind of like bring them back to life. So, let me just summarise the ingredients we've got, and then we'll see, excuse me, if this thing is actually edible. The first main ingredient is uh, potatoes. You can actually get some quite flowery potatoes. The one in our tin, they're actually new potatoes, but they're peeled, coming to 32 pence. We've got 75 grams of uh, plain flour, and that comes in at about 6p, and as you know, I've got blooming mountains of it in the cupboard. One egg, which I bought in bulk in a huge 18-pack thing, and that actually came to 18p for that one large egg. We've got some passata here in a carton, and I'm not going to use that whole amount, probably two thirds of the tub, which comes in at 20 English pence. We've got a mozzarella ball, which turns out isn't actually shaped like a mozzarella ball that much, it's more like a sort of squished disc. Uh, we only need about a third of that, which will turn up about 14 pence. You can make your own, I've done that before, and it's really fun. This pepperoni rack, I don't know if that's a thing, a pepperoni rack, there's two rows of pepperoni, probably going to use around about four discs, a disc of pepperoni, that sounds very elegant, uh, they're about two pence each. Uh, this massive bunch of basil, again we mentioned it on the, on the bacon pasta, actually how you can grow your own, really fun to grow, that smells amazing. Uh, this is gonna, probably going to use about two leaves, we've got so many there, so we work them out, each leaf is about one pence from what you get on a big bunch in the supermarket. That concludes the montage folks, and if you think that I remembered all that, uh, you're wrong because I actually wrote a list with all the numbers on it and added it up to make sure it came to a pound, because yes, <laughs> I have a memory like a wet, that's a wet sieve, I have a memory like a sieve, I have a memory like a sieve. How cool is that? One pound for all of these ingredients. I mean, it's quite minimal. Look at it, it's like, oh, is that it? But like, I mean, you're obviously getting just a few discs of pepperoni, just a few leaves there, but that is it. I, I've never made gnocchi. Please be good, please be good, please be good. Random fact for you, whilst the water boils, my mum is sometimes an extra in things. I think I've mentioned it before. She was in the film Black Ball, or whatever it is, with uh, Vince Vaughn. She was in, there's an office scene where she's like a secretary. She was also on some random TV show quite recently where I saw her in the background knitting in a church. I was like, is that my mum? But she says, I'm in this show called Outlaws. I'm like, oh, I'll start to watch it. It was filmed in Bristol, and I, I live near Bristol, and it's like quite familiar settings. I don't really watch much TV. I'm like, oh wow, that's really cool. Because Christopher Walken's in it, and Stephen Merchant, and some other famous people. I'm like, oh, that's, that's really cool. Well done, Mum. She's like, yeah, I'm in the face painting scene, and my mum can paint faces, but she doesn't know whose face she has painted. And I'm like, oh my gosh, have you painted Christopher Walken's face? So I've ended up watching this whole series so far and not seen it. So what I'm thinking is in a future video, as soon as I spot that scene, unless you watch it, of course, it is quite good, I'll coincidentally have that scene in the background on my telly, okay? Um, oh, it just happens to be my mum painting a face. It, it might be a spec. Sometimes she plays the role of like PE assistant five. Just keep an eye out. It's kind of like a Where's Wally of my mum. Oh, I've never used tin potatoes before. It says do not boil the water. Okay, and it's very nearly there. I got carried away doing my Christopher Walken story. So I've drained these potatoes and, oh my gosh, that was fun. Sticking them in there, they're already part cooked, they're already peeled, unless you have an industrial potato peeling tumbler in your garage like I do, of course you do. I just think that's really genius. It's not lazy, it's convenient. Hmm. Said it in that video right now, isn't that really weird and quite cool that there's no starch at all in the water? Tin potatoes for the win. To be fair, that is a lot of potatoes for one portion. We, I think we are going under a pound really, but hey ho, it's all good. One pound sounds better. But we need a place for these potatoes to cool because we're getting them off the heat now, so a big old bowl like that. Something nice and big and easy to mash in. Yes. We want to keep the water warm because we can cook the gnocchi in that water which is already warmed. Oh my gosh. Just pulverising these potatoes. 
that was fun. Right, I'm gonna do this to both my basil leaves. You might remember where we got this before, um, but I'll show you with one of them. You just take a basil leaf and roll it up quite tightly. Some of you may have had practice doing something like this. And then you just chop along that log that you've made. I don't mind chucking this in because it'll just wilt and shrivel up in the heat of the potatoes, which is probably a good thing. Um, but we are adding an egg in, so that's why I'm taking my time. If I don't want to cook the egg in the bowl, <laughs> I mean, that's new recipe territory. All right, so that mixture has nice and cooled down now. Egg, boom. I really do like this big bowl. I, I, it's weird how a bowl, as I've got older, excites me. And now it's about using that flour to dry this out. So we'll shimmy it in in batches. And you can see that already. Look at the effect that's had. Wow. Because <laughs> we're trying to get it to a consistency where we can shape it or roll it at least like a dough and it's, it's not wet essentially. So see you in a minute. Just take one little ball like this, roll it up. Oh yes. <laughs> oh, I have no idea why I had a fork out, but so this is about as authentic as I'm gonna get it. I'm sure the Italian nonnas have some crazy, oh, then they have that machine where they're like, Rip. Huh? Look at that. I'm not gonna lie, I'm pleasantly surprised. I mean, that is plenty uh, for one portion. Look how much I've got left. Potatoes in a tin, so cheap, one egg and some flour. Okay, you might not have as much flour as I have in my house right now, but you're gonna have some flour, right? Anyhow, the water that we cook the potatoes in is simmering. Nice, we'll ring that down. And uh, I know somewhere in Italy, some lady's going, oh my gosh, it's a knock, a knock. I'm doing my best here, come on, mate. Actually, to flip it over, you could put an Italian nonna into a British house and go, right, make a fry up, and they'd be like, I have, uh... yeah, huh? Use your nonna now. Sorry, I love you, nonnas. I'd love to go to Italy, sit in a lane, and make pasta all day. If any of you can help me make that happen. Oh, there we go. Straight down like that, okay? It's lowered the temperature of the water slightly, but apparently within one minute, this should start to, as it cooks the flour, rise to the surface. And actually, I can see it moving a little bit. This is very exciting. This is a very exciting personal moment for me. My first ever knock it, it's like a shuttle. <laughs> it's preparing to launch. I don't know as it's cooked if it's pushed out those markings I made. Hmm. Come on, rise for me. Come on, mate. Permission to take off? Come on, it's not like William Shatner's in there, is it? I'm not gonna be Jeff Bezos and celebrate that you've landed or anything like that, am I? I'm actually wondering, I just forgot to ask Tom Scott the other day, did our garlic bread go higher than like William Shatner? My arm's starting to go sore now. This has been more than a minute. After all that, is it stuck to the bottom? Yes, it was. <laughs> Look, there's a teeny little patch. Okay. Um, well, it's cooked. I've just got to do that with about 15 more other ones. All right, my arm is dangerously close to this hob. Um, if I hurt myself, it'd be worth the sacrifice. I just want to show you the slash marks are all facing that side up. It's dancing around the pan. They've all come to the surface. I've given them like an extra 30 seconds just so that they're all happy and um, I think we'll take that off the heat. So I'm going to take my dish that I'm very excited about and pour in the passata. That's actually, I budgeted for two thirds and I've only used half there. Okay. But before I stick the gnocchi in, I'm going to give that pepperoni. So I want a little bit of the oils when, this, when we cook this, just sort of seeping in throughout the whole sauce. And the basil. Oh, I'm gonna leave a little bit there for the end. And I broke my spatula the other day, as you know. This is a new one that I ordered on the World Wide Web. The only thing I wish with this right now is that I seasoned it. But we will place these things that look a little bit like wood lice uh, into the dish. They're basically like little carbohydrate capsules, aren't they? And I'm gonna put my pepperoni with some more mozzarella on top. I have no idea visually what this is gonna look like once it bakes. Obviously want the oils from the pepperoni to get through in it nice and bubbly and the cheese to melt as well. Oh my gosh. But I might reserve a little bit of that as well, the cheese, just for the end, maybe. I don't know, but I haven't used it all. 
and we now bake this to warm it all through. I'm really excited. That is hot, oh my gosh. Ow. So let's see what that turns out like. Randomly, I was gonna completely twist this. I was gonna do a gnocchi with uh, creme fraiche and dill and crab and mix it all together in this like lemony sauce. But crab, I was sitting in the supermarket like, I didn't get upset, but it's quite expensive. Even like little crab meat. I was gonna go crab paste. Mmm. Mmm. I have like one left over there. I was like, oh, it's gonna be stodgy. It's just like a potato dumpling. Really nice. I think some seasoning in there would be good. I do genuinely want to make a giant one now. I think Beard Meets Food and I would definitely do some collaboration soon. Um, so if I'm making him a giant gnocchi, the stodge of that, I'll like make it enormous. There's no way he could eat that. Sure, I mean, even if he does, it's just bland, right? I do want to do lots more collaborations. So if there's a creator that you know, uh, please reach out to them if you don't mind and say, hey, get in touch with Barry. Because sometimes I ask people and they're like, no, we don't. Uh, yeah, maybe we can fit you in 2027. Like, okay. So if there's a creator that you think, hey, Come on, this isn't from fine. That'd be cool. But yeah, Beard Meets Food is happening. Um, a guy called James Hoffman as well, we're doing something together. And of course the Tom Scott video. But I, I feel like I want to get out and about, maybe uh, see some people. All right, it has had just over 10 minutes. Can you see it bubbling away? The pepperoni's curved up, the cheese is melted slightly browned, and some of that gnocchi has risen to the top. Oh my gosh, that smells so good. Oh, I can't be honest. The oils from that pepperoni have sat in there. The sauce has thickened up. The mozzarella and the gnocchi has kind of blended together and I blooming love it. I'm just gonna add a bit more like fresh mozzarella in there just to make the colors pop a little bit as well. I had it left out, I might as well use it. I mean, it still looks like a bathtub to me. That whole pan is basically a bathtub, but I think it's time to taste it. So what I'm hoping for is a basil infused slightly tangy sauce from the pepperoni, the juices from the top here are soaked in too, chewy mozzarella from where it's been baked through and also golden on the top, the chunks of that basil infused gnocchi and the freshness of that little extra basil and the mozzarella we just put on there which is actually still warming through now, uh, let's see how it goes. I thought I'd pick a spoon actually, oh my gosh I've got a bit of everything on there, oh I've got everything! Mm. Oh my word, that is comforting. It's a cold, nippy day here in England. And I mean, I guess maybe it's slight, I could kind of call it a soup as well. It's got a tomato-based sauce. Bacon it has really thickened it up and reduced it slightly as well. Or you could simmer it down even more in a pan beforehand if you want. Infuse more flavours in there. I'd probably like to make like a basil oil or something and drizzle that on. But the gnocchi is almost sort of, oh look, a little bit of goo there. It's like more softened, almost like a delicate pillow now from being submerged in that pepperoni tangy sauce. Mmm, that's just worked so well. That's amazing. And do you know what I get quite excited by? Is when I genuinely make something that I can have as my lunch. The two foot croque monster was a little bit of a push, I'm not gonna lie, but that was phenomenal too. But this is great. Ugh. We've done it again. Another budget meal, which is awesome. And thank you so much for enjoying this. Don't forget to check out the 99p bacon pasta and the Cajun chicken tacos as well. If you've got any ideas, I did look at doing a sweet one today actually, but I was like, well, a chocolate cake is a cake, isn't it? And I'm trying to do the best ingredients I can. This isn't about getting all the budget ones. That's my cheap versus steep playlist. So hopefully you want to see this and keep it going. We've done a few more of these videos now. So uh, anything you would like to see, do let me know. I was thinking fish cakes, maybe something cool like that, a, a lamb burger, I don't know. But you could easily pad that out more. I really wanted to put mushrooms in there, but but the internet hates mushrooms, so that's why I didn't do that. I, I, I love it how that gets dictated. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a like so other people can discover the video and go, oh, he's cool, I might subscribe. And if you haven't subscribed, please consider doing so. Thank you so much for the support, whether you've been here since day one or day 1492. And of course, if you do give this a go, ooh, send me some in the post or just send me a photo uh, on social media. Tag me, I love to see it. Cheers then, bye bye. Got all the notes, baby, like a treble clef. Cooking up this song like the naked chef. I know what you're thinking, British guy drinking tea, but I'm gangster British, baby. I prefer chickpeas. So you've already seen the tea drinking collaboration that video I did with Tom Scott, but we were here for a video for his uh, channel. Uh, it was an ice cream one. The only thing I'm going to say is we used a very hot chilli. And uh, if I can just summarise this very quickly, when Mrs B and the kids came home from work yesterday, this is when we filmed it. If you need to tell your wife, uh, or your partner, your other half, whatever, like, Please do not come in the kitchen. That is like a lead balloon. Um, I was in Mrs. B's bad books. I was like, this is for your own safety. Please give me 10 minutes to tidy this kitchen. It is not safe. And woo. Yes, very hostile environment last night, folks. Walked the dogs and I had to get out. I'd never tell someone to not go into a kitchen when they're hungry and they want a coffee. I learned that lesson last night.
Yeah. I get in my kitchen. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs>